just sitting here adding the finishing touches to my latest episode here on Signal Ridge. I feel like this is going to get me in trouble. Yes, can you connect me with Brian and Legal? Hey Brian, so hypothetical situation. What if I were to make a video about repurposing a crap PC into playing your favorite retro gaming titles? Don't do that. Okay, well, I just did. I think I'm doing the world a favor. You know how many old computers wind up in landfills? I would like to think that game companies care enough about the environment that they'll overlook my activities. Nintendo will still sue. Well, what if I'm a full-time teacher? They like teachers, right? If you think about it, I made the video for educational purposes, you know? Well, I might need some legal representation then. Okay guys, we're gonna start here. This is a Dell Optiplex, either 745 or 780 or some variation. I do not know what it is exactly because the little label is missing up here. So, of course I can go into the BIOS and figure all that out, but that doesn't matter. Um, I purchased these in a huge pallet off of a guy on OfferUp. I believe it was last summer. I got like 18 computers from him uh, for really cheap less than $5 a pop, which was great. Um, the only deal was, it was as is. Um, he told me that they all, the majority, did have the RAM, CPU, power supply. There were three or four that were missing, um, that were different units than this, and they were missing uh, mostly power supplies. But those were i5s, which I was ecstatic about because I could get a lot of use out of those building arcades. But no hard drives whatsoever, no OS, no operating system, no Windows. So big box was not an option for these computers, um, but that's okay because these are kind of obsolete and won't run big box very well or Windows 10 for that matter. So what I have here is a very old crappy PC and what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to make it a decent retro gaming computer. Um, special thanks to ETA Prime because he does stuff like this all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna crack it open. I'm gonna show you guys what um, you need to look for and what you don't need. So you pull this latch up here, come up, and there you have it. So the, some of these cables would normally be plugged into a hard drive so that is missing there might be a hard drive fan up here you just pinch the little plastic pieces and pull that up uh, and the hard drive and the fan will will all come up again there'll be these little blue tabs up here so that's not uh, on this unit uh, the floppy drive and the um, CD drive are not hooked up because there will be cables going into there obviously so if I just put this and pull this back, pull the floppy drive back, and there you can see my RAM. So you don't actually need this stuff if you want to discard it, but it does, you know, look flush there in the front if you know if you care about that. I guess uh, again, most of these I've put in computers or arcades that I've built, so it doesn't really need to look all fancy. So you need to have RAM. So if I just check these. RAM sticks out, let's see what we got. Um, looks like we got, I don't know if you can see there. We've got one gigabyte, so as I would expect, we got one gig of RAM there. So probably more than likely, we're looking at four gigs of RAM, four gig, four gigs of one gig sticks. Let's check here, this one might be more maybe. Nope, one gig. You see there, a gigabyte of RAM. So two to four gigs will be all that we need, four gigs preferably, uh, because we're gonna put a lot of games on here, so, and a lot of metadata. But that's what you need. That is all you need. Make sure your the fan is intact here, because that's where your CPU is. If, it, if this part's here, then more than likely, your CPU is there. So yeah, we're good to go. I'm gonna put this back and, a couple more 
things, I guess. Um, you can usually find these things on OfferUp um, for pretty cheap. Um, sometimes you can even find them on Facebook Marketplace for free. People are just trying to get rid of old computers. So it's a great way, again, to um, to play some of your favorite retro titles. You can you can get a lot of mileage out of out of these things and um, and make it look very clean um, with the bottom of Sarah front end. So that's what we're going to look at next. So let's do it. Before I begin discussing how to install Botocera to whatever PC you had lying around or whatever one you decided to acquire, I figured I'd show you guys how it looks, provide a little sneak peek to motivate you to get this done. As you can see, the presentation here is amazing, and this is just the stock appearance, so there is a lot of potential. But if you're someone who just likes simplicity, like myself, this will be more than enough to please you. There are just a couple extra steps to get the box art for your games going, but it's pretty easy and well worth the effort. Okay, first we need two USB thumb drives, one to transfer ROMs and one for our Linux-based operating system, Botocera. We also need this program Etcher so that we can flash Botocera onto our thumb drive. Next, we will need the image file of Botocera itself, which we can get on their website. And lastly, I need you to make a mental note of this website screen scraper for later. I would go ahead and click register, scroll down, put in the desired information, and that will give us a dependable source to download box art and other metadata later on. Okay, so we've got Etra here on my desktop. Now you may have to run this as administrator in order to get it to install. Once it installs, it, there will be another icon that shows up on your desktop, so make sure you click that one. Not the previous one, obviously. You click that, you'll select flash from file, and then now you need to, of course, locate where you uh, downloaded the bottom Sarah image file. So I, of course, did that on my desktop. So I, go, I will go to desktop, I will click the image file. Now we have to pick the destination. Um, this is, of course, the USB thumb drive that we have, one of them. So I will put that on the thumb drive, flash, and while that kind of, while we wait for that to go through, um, we need to talk about having a keyboard plugged into your, uh, the PC that you're gonna have Bottle of Sarah running, because you're going to have to go into the BIOS menu. So you might see something like this. You'll just have to read the instructions, whatever, you, whatever key you have to press to get into the BIOS menu, that's what you need to do, or setup menu. So F2, F10, it could be, um, you know, I've seen everything basically. So you'll go into there and the most important thing you can see here, I've got extra RAM and stuff because um, this is one of my other units, but you need to go to the boot order, boot sequence, and you need to make sure that everything is deselected except for the USB drive. Okay, bottom Sarah is booted up. Now, one of the first things we're gonna need to do is plug in a controller. I prefer an Xbox One or PS4 controller because those work the best. Um, and we're going to configure it through the options, game controls, and as we're prompted, we just need to put in the input, obviously, and the hotkey can be whatever you want. It could be the Xbox button, the PS4 button. Um, of course, this is not wireless. You're gonna have to actually plug in the charging cable to the PC from the controller. Next, we're gonna talk about the game selection settings or collection settings. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of random stuff on there, so make sure you go through that and just deselect anything you don't want, and that's how you're going to get, you know, what you desire. Now, press F1. That will get you to the file folder structure of Botocera, and you need to plug in your other USB drive with your ROMs, and that will show up on the left there. You don't see it because I don't have a USB, another USB drive uh, plugged in. But basically I would click on that, copy the ROM files I want from a particular system, not all of them. And then I'll go into the ROMs file and then I can you know, paste in by system the ROMs that, that I want on Botocera. And basically that will give me what I need. Then you'll go to scrape. And now here there are multiple options. You have the games database, arcade database. Those are free. 
Uh, screen scraper, however, is the most reliable. It works the best with Autocera, I've found. You go down to username, you'll input that username that you created and the password. And essentially, you'll just scrape. Uh, I like the box art images. And that is how you will get this. Even your arcade games will have box art. So it'll look nice and clean and presentable. Um, you show this off to your friends. They'll be tripping out and feeling all nostalgic and you guys can get into playing some games. One last thing before I go, if you happen to get your hands on one of these Dell Optiplexes, you may or may not get a display port out that you will find in this location here, which is great because you could then use a display port to HDMI cable to hook up to a modern TV. If you don't actually have the display port out here, then you could go with the VGA and you could go into a four x three computer monitor, um, which would be great because then it's the proper aspect ratio and you don't have to worry about overlays and all that stuff. But you could also uh, get an adapter, VGA to HDMI. Of course, the audio won't come through, so you'll have to you know, figure that out uh, through like maybe a, uh, um, was a sound bar or something like that, computer speakers. Um, the best option, however, though, is a graphics card of some sort, a separate GPU. Um, some of these did come with GPUs, but they were they had a different kind of uh, like a DVI, a special sort of DVI out. So um, that would be an issue. But you could get a pretty cheap graphics card on eBay, uh, AMD or NVIDIA for like five to fifteen bucks. One of those older ones, um, like ten years old or so. Uh, make sure it's the small profile GPU though. And you could, you know, then get your display port out that way. That's what I did on one of these computers that I have um, in my living room. And that would also give you the ability to play um, N64 games because without the extra GPU power, you're going to have a pretty difficult time getting some decent uh, N64 performance. That's all for me guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like down below as well as a comment if you have any questions because I'm definitely sure I left something out. I was going to do a Retro Quest Wednesday but I'm going to save that for next week. Retro Palooza is actually this weekend here in Houston so I'm very excited about that. Uh, Pat the NES Punk will be there as well as John Riggs so I'm hoping to reunite with him. So naturally I'm very excited. There will be tons of YouTube content creators out there as well as games on display and you know I'm sure action figures collectibles all kinds of stuff so hopefully I'll get some footage of that and maybe I'll leave that for next Wednesday if not then I'll probably upload something here this weekend thank you guys so much for your support as always and I'll catch you guys next time Okay, so pro tip for you new tubers if you're gonna use a white sheet as a backdrop Probably you should iron it first. Also, make sure it's one your kids have never used because I don't know what the hell this is. That might be a booger stain.